Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Gaurav Paul. I'm a graduate of KGMC Lucknow. I passed out in 2017. Uh, since then, I've worked in a variety of uh, private and common setups and learned a lot over these years about the different materials available in the market. And today, uh, as an intern for Gultin, I would like to share with you the different types of obturation techniques that we have in the market and a sealer that is uh, cut of load 2. Before I get into the topic of the different types of obturation techniques, we all understand that one thing that is very basic and that is an essential part of an of a perfect obturation, if, if at all, if it is achievable, is the sealer. A sealer has to produce the hermetic seal that uh, we have all learned during our BDS days. Over the years, uh, different types of sealers have been produced starting with hydron that was a monoblock that it was produced and eventually it was, it was a resin sealer and it was ultimately discarded and since then we have come a long way and today we have uh, very magnificent sealers which you know kind of uh, heals itself like bioceramic sealers and all of those stuff today we'll see uh, what gutta flow 2 has to offer and how it is very different from the types of sealers that we have in the market today. So in this slide, I will begin with the different types of sealers that are available in the market or that is still available in the market and how the journey of sealer actually began. So first let's start off with zinc oxide regional that we all have used in our college days and we still love to use it. So apart from the basic advantages and disadvantages that we have, it exhibits a very slow setting time it shrinks on setting which is a very bad thing uh, for a sealer to have it has a high solubility and the one thing that uh, really stands out is that it can stain to structure some of the uh, zinc oxide eugenol sealers available in the market are mentioned in the example section you can see it in the slide other other thing that is available in the market are epoxy resin sealers which are still in use today and uh, it, it is a good sealer nevertheless it has its own disadvantages for example the first thing that uh, they came up with was age 26 and one very bad thing that it had was a release of formaldehyde which we all know is a carcinogen so it was ultimately refigured redesigned and they came up with age plus which uh, which they claim to have do not have any uh, formaldehyde as such so let's now see the different types of resin sealers that are available in the market so as i've already mentioned the first generation was the hydron sealer which ultimately became obsolete because uh, of its uh, clinical outcomes. The second generation was the non-etching and hydrophilic in nature. The resin sealers were developed concurrently with our composite resins and its timeline is comparable. So it's overall it's a kind of the same thing. So one example that st that is still in use today is Endores and uh, there are many advantages of it like it's designed to flow into the accessory canals and it the main thing is it, it forms a resin tag formation the one thing that we require in composite like the bonding with dentin and all it has a very good uh, resin tag formation which helps in the uh, retention of the seal after its placement here in this slide we can see the third generation and the fourth generation sealers the third generation sealers are self etching sealers and by the name itself it can be understood that it does not require a separate etching step. Uh, one example of it is Resilon. The fourth generation are the self adhesive. Once again I, I would like to remind you that it was developed concurrently with the composites and hence the features that we learn about the different bonding agents and all, all of those stuff applies here also. The fourth generation sealers again uh, was another step ahead of it and the examples include meta seal and real seal se so now we come on to the tricalcium and dicalcium silicate sealers the one that we talk about more often than other root canal sealers it is because it exhibits a significant improvement in biocompatibility than other sealers nevertheless it is a very good obturating material but one uh, very uh, difficult thing that we have is its manipulation and its setting time it's very long uh, many of us who have used mta i think uh, all of us have used it at one point of time will attest to it that uh, perforation repair with this material has gives significant results 
but its manipulation and it the setting time that it takes makes the job a little bit hard than uh, it should be uh, example of it would be uh, mtfl apex and endo sequence bioceramic sealer these are available in the market these are some of the photos that i have attached of the examples that i have given h plus can be seen uh, we have cutter flow uh, the cutter flow was the previous generation we will talk about cutter flow 2 today and this was a trituration uh, capsule that we used to have now the modified variant is available and uh, another example another photo that's available is the i root sp that's a bioceramic sealer when we talk about the different methods of obturation the first thing that comes into our mind is uh, lateral compaction undoubtedly it is the most commonly used uh, method and and, and it has been taught uh, to students and it is still the most common method used due to its simplicity but uh, even so there are many things advantages and disadvantages uh, which, which governs uh, the use of this method in this uh, short clip we'll understand how this method is used in this technique first we have to select a gutta percha cone that fits well into the apical preparation this is called as the master cone it is the same size as the master apical file. It should fit perfectly at the working length. If you try to remove it, it should show resistance to displacement, which is called as tug back. After the canal irrigation is done and it is dried with paper points, the fit of the master cone that we have selected should be confirmed on the radiograph. If it extends beyond the apical foramen, we have to cut the tip off so that it will fit correctly at the working length or else we can insert the next larger size GP cone and then verify the fit radiographically. If the master cone falls short of the working length, it means that apical patency is not maintained. So we have to prepare the apical third of the canal. So canal shaping with the master apical file is again done to the correct working length and then another GP cone is fitted to the corrected working length. This is again verified on the radiograph. Now the instruments which we need for the compaction of the gutta percha are called as spreaders. There are hand spreaders and finger spreaders. The use of finger spreaders is recommended because they provide a better tactile sensation. They are also less likely to exert excessive force on the root. The spreader should fit within 1 to 2 millimeters of the working length and when it is first placed alongside the master cone it should be 1 mm short of the length of the master cone. This is how the spreader is selected. Next is application of a sealer. The sealer application can be done using a lentulo spiral or with the master GP cone itself. So after a small amount of sealer is introduced in the root canal, the master cone is slowly inserted to the working length. The spreader is then introduced between the master cone and the canal wall. The master cone is now laterally compacted by rotating the spreader in 180 degree motions. Because of this what happens is the master cone gets compacted against the canal wall and at the same time space is created laterally to the master cone. In this space now we can place auxiliary cones or secondary cones after removing the spreader. These secondary cones are selected based on the size of the spreader, the size of the canal and the position of the space created inside the canal. Before insertion they are lightly coated with sealer and they are introduced to the same depth that the spreader has last reached. The spreader is then reinserted to make room for the next secondary cone. A radiograph should be taken when two or three secondary cones have been condensed in the root canal. This is to determine the amount of flow and to avoid overfilling. So at this stage if adjustment is necessary it can be done. For example if overfilling has occurred the GP cone can be removed. So this process of insertion of the secondary cones is repeated until the spreader cannot be reinserted. When the spreader can only go in about 2 to 3 millimeters into the canal orifice then we can consider that the obturation is complete. After this we will need a post obturation radiograph. If the obturation is correct, finally the excess GP is removed with a heat carrier. The pulp chamber is cleaned with a cotton pellet soaked in alcohol 
to remove any leftover particles of the GP or sealer material. The primary advantage of this method, apart from its uh, simplicity, is that it has a very minimum chance of apical leakage, which is obviously very important because uh, we don't need uh, fluids and sealers percolating into the apical area. Other than that, it has uh, a, it provides a positive dimensional stability. The disadvantages include the presence of voids because since we are doing it uh, mechanically without the without any thermoplastic techniques, uh, the penetration of the material into the lateral canals and uh, tiny can uh, canals and all those things will be minimum. If not absent, it will be very less. Let's move on to warm vertical compaction. This procedure is widely adopted now due to the availability of different types of instruments and materials. One very important disadvantage of uh, warm vertical compaction is that there is a risk of vertical root fracture. This is a very big disadvantage that this procedure has because of the compaction forces that we the plugger that we use and uh, you know the compaction forces can uh, induce vertical root fracture in this teeth. In a traditional vertical condensation downpack technique, the heat carrier is inserted into the gutta percha mass a few millimeters. The change in color indicates that heat is being transferred a few millimeters down through the mass of gutta percha. The heat is then turned off and the instrument is removed. Some gutta percha will stick to the cooling instrument as it is removed. A pre-fitted plugger is introduced to compress the gutta percha that has remained in the canal space. This plugger is worked around the canal to push the gutta percha down and compress it into nearby lateral canals and anastomoses. The plugger is then held on top of the gutta percha mass for about five seconds as it cools. This helps to minimize shrinkage. The heat carrier is again inserted. It is taken a few millimeters deeper into the gutta percha mass. As the power is turned off, the heat carrier is removed and another ball of thermosoftened gutta percha adheres to the instrument. Again, a pre-fitted plugger is inserted to circumferentially compact the remaining gutta percha. In this animated example, the plugger pushes the gutta percha within five or six millimeters of the apex. The plugger is again held against the gutta percha mass as it cools. The plugger is then removed, showing a completed downpack obtained with the vertical condensation technique, which is ready for backfilling. So the warm vertical method was a very different technique than the lateral compaction technique, which was introduced uh, because of the inability of the other method to penetrate the material into the finer canals uh, in the apical area. So the obvious advantage includes the better, you know, the better filling of the uh, lateral canals and all those stuff, the excellent seal of the canal that we can achieve apically as well as laterally. The one very important disadvantage of uh, warm vertical compaction is the condensation pressure that we use because undue condensation pressures will cause vertical fracture of the root. This is what the, the tooth is already very weakened due to the, you know, the root canal and all those stuff. But undue pressure with the condensers can induce vertical root fracture. Other than that, another disadvantage is that there is very less control of the length uh, over the GP that we have. Due to the condensation forces, there is a high chance that the GP might extrude out of the canal. Moving on, we have the continuous wave compaction technique. This is a modification of warm vertical compaction. Here the procedure remains basically the same with a slight difference. It will be clear in the video that I have in the next slide. Uh, so let's move on to it. In a continuous wave downpack technique, the heat carrier is inserted into the gutta percha mass. Color changes indicate where the gutta percha is changing temperature and being thermosoftened. The heat is kept on as the carrier is pressed further and further into the gutta percha mass. As the carrier moves apically, gutta percha is forced laterally into canal irregularities. Deep in the canal space, the heat is cycled off. Downward pressure is kept on the cooling carrier. 
This continued pressure, in turn, exerts pressure on the gutta percha, forcing it into more lateral canals and anastomoses. After several seconds, and when the carrier has reached its ultimate depth, a second, one-second burst of heat is applied. One second later, as the carrier begins cooling, it is rocked side to side in the canal space. This motion separates the gutta percha mass into a segment apical to the heat carrier tip and a segment coronal to the tip. The carrier is then removed from the canal space. The apical portion of the separated gutta percha mass remains in the canal space. The rest of the gutta percha comes out of the canal space with the carrier. A small prefit plugger is inserted into the canal space and used to tamp down the apical plug of gutta percha. The plugger is removed in the final step of the continuous wave technique, leaving the apical plug and the remaining space ready for backfilling. So the continuous wave technique is basically a modification of the warm vertical compaction method. It is a procedural uh, manipulation of that method and it takes significantly less time than the original method. Another benefit of this method is that it is a centered condensation technique and the skill and time required as I've already mentioned is much less than the original warm vertical technique because when the condenser is centered in the canal it automatically dissipates equal pressure around the canal system which leads to an effective obturation. Now we have the thermoplastic technique. It is basically the backfill that we do with uh, GP pellets or basically plasticized uh, gutta percha and instruments like Obscura 3, Calamus, Elements, these all instruments are used. Let me remind you that these instruments are significantly costly. And why I mentioned this uh, uh, factor about the cost part is because uh, the gutta flow 2 that we have would significantly uh, reduce this factor that we have. Let we'll see about it in the uh, coming slides. The advantage is the flowability in this technique and the corresponding disadvantage is the lack of length control as we have already seen in the other warm techniques. Overextension and underextension are very common in this technique. So carrier based gutta percha was introduced to solve the monobog problem that we had. So K files, steel K files were coated with gutta percha and it acted as a core and it was placed into the canals. Obviously the rigid prints were very difficult with the K file with the K files in the canal. So it was later replaced with uh, plastic cores. But nevertheless the problem remained. And uh, thing is that uh, it is not a very common method of obturation, at least here in India. So this is a very interesting technique after the preparation of the root canal. We select the thermophil carrier according to the master apical file size. We prep the uh, carrier that is we soften the gutta percha in a dedicated oven, a thermo prep oven that is available. And then we place the carrier along with the gutta percha which has been softened in the oven inside the canal and we sear it off at the coronal level. After that we can do a bit of condensation and that is it. So the obvious advantage in this technique was the core that is the defining uh, criteria of this technique. The central core provided a rigid mechanism uh, to facilitate the placement of the GP and due to the pliable nature of the gutta percha it uh, flowed easily into the canals because it was softened and there is minimal voids and gaps because of the central core itself. The disadvantage is that many a times what happens in the apical area the GP would strip off from the core itself and it would leave only the core in the apical part. Now that if that happens that uh, negates the primary principle of the hermetic seal and the method goes into waste but other than that it is a very uh, beneficial method to achieve a good seal. The thermomechanical compaction the instrument used is the max pattern compactor it is used with an engine and here the basics uh, the basic process is that the after the canal has been prepared the master cone has been inserted the instrument the compactor is inserted be is on the side of the canal and the master cone and the engine is started this rapid movement of the file in the canal generates heat it makes the gp pliable and compactable and hence it is pushed apically and laterally to fill the canal 
so in this uh, photo it can be seen uh, how the compactor is introduced into the canal and when the machine started heat is generated which is then compacted with a condenser and it fills irregularities in the apical half so the advantages are that it has a very simplistic armamentarium and it fills the canal irregularities very nicely one very important disadvantage is, is that the breakage of the instrument inside the canal and uh, the gouging of the canal walls like we don't want ledges to be present we don't want to make ledges but this instrument can in, and very easily introduce some all those kinds of things into the canal and it is almost impossible to use in curved canals so after having gone through all the methods of obturation we can realize very easily that the warm techniques they provide a very good flow and hence provides good sealing of the root canal whereas one very important problem with this technique is the lack of length control because of the condensation now on the other hand we have the lateral condensation technique which provides a very good uh, control of length but the problem with that is that we cannot have the same level of uh, filling of the lateral canals so how can we move forward from this point so here comes the interesting part what if we can have the best of both worlds uh, what if we can have the properties of a cold and flowable obturation so what the basic property what the problem that we would be solving is the risk of a vertical fracture due to the compaction forces in a warm vertical compaction and we would also have the flowability of a warm vertical compaction without or virtually having minimum condensation is that possible let's go and see about it so we have the silicon sealers one of the first silicon sealers in the market was Royco Seal, which is manufactured by Coltin. Ever since then, it has been continuously modified and redesigned. Since then, Gutta Flow was manufactured. After that, Gutta Flow 2 was manufactured, both by Coltin. And they both have cold flowable mattresses and are triturated. This basically means that there are two compounds and they are mixed to produce a homogeneous mix which contains GP. Yeah, right. You have heard it right. This is one of the most interesting feature that cutter flow 2 and its predecessors have they contain gp in particulate form that is less than 30 micrometers in size so let's see and understand what this what the presence of gp in a sealer can bring about the changes in its properties so without any further ado let's talk about gutta flow 2 this material gutta flow 2 is the first flowable non-heated gutta percha it means that it does not require any heat and it is flowable and it requires minimum to no condensation. The, the reason being uh, gutta flow 2 being flowable is a physical property of the material called thixotropy. Thixotropy basically means that when a material is put under pressure, the viscosity of the material decreases. The beautiful thing about gutta flow 2 is that when it is forced into very narrow diameter canals, uh, lateral canals and, uh, and places as such, the viscosity of the material decreases and it flows inside beautifully and the property of the expansion, the slight expansion that it has increases the retention of the material in the canal beautifully. In this slide, we'll talk about the different ingredients of gutta flow 2, beginning with the gutta percha powder, the polydimethylsiloxane that has been in use since Royco seal. The platinum catalyst, zirconium dioxide and the micro silver which is used as a preservative. The saline features are described in the slide. Uh, the most important of it being that it is highly biocompatible. It is eugenol free. The disadvantages of eugenol are known uh, to all of us. The property that it does not shrink but expands slightly which the material uses this property very beautifully and improves in the retention of the material. The working time is about 10 to 15 minutes. One important thing to note is that heat reduces the working time of this material. Working time of this material is 25 to 30 minutes. To fill a canal with the new Gutta Flow 2 syringe delivery system, apply light pressure to the plunger to dispense the premixed material from the tip. Insert Gutta Flow 2 into the root canal with the master point, the last used apical file or a lentulo spiral. If using the master point, set the apical stop, coat the master point, and then apply gutta flow 2 to the canal. 
remove the master point, recoat with sufficient gutta flow 2, and slowly insert the master point for permanent placement. If the canal is not completely filled, coat one or more accessory gutta percha points, insert into the canal, and sear off the points with a heated hand instrument. No lateral or vertical condensation is necessary. Because gutta flow 2 combines a sealer and gutta percha in one product, it is not necessary to use a sealer to seal the canal. In this slide, uh, let's see how gutta flow 2 is used and manipulated for its placement in the root canal. Uh, one very important thing to note is that both the openings of the applicator should not be mixed and it should be kept clean to avoid contamination. So in this slide, we'll talk about how we can remove the root canal filling during retreatments. We have seen that in MTA type materials, it is very difficult to remove the material from the canal uh, during retreatments. The, that problem is solved with this material because you know normal procedures that are used to remove the filling like uh, use of round burr or Gates Glidden uh, uh, drill can be used and it can be removed effectively. In this slide, uh, the overview of gutta flow 2 is shown in a small video. Here you can see how the material is manipulated, its place in the root canal and all of this stuff. One very important thing is that its solubility is almost zero. A study has been made and it has been found out that the solubility of gutta flow 2 in the root canal is almost zero which is an added advantage because the lesser the solubility of the sealer in the root canal, the better is the prognosis of our case. So in this slide, we'll talk about the in vitro cytotoxicity or basically the biocompatibility of gutta flow 2 in comparison with the very commonly used other materials or that are available in the market. So as you can see, the gutta flow 2 has the maximum amount of uh, live viable cells even after 7 days and it's the highest in, in the first day. In com with comparison to gutta flow 2, you can see the other products are far beneath the control that we have and only gutta flow 2 even compares to the control. In this slide, we evaluate the root filling quality of the different materials that we used in the study. In this study, gutta flow was used along with a very unique uh, obturation technique that is ultrasonic vibration and thermohydrodynamic obturation. It, the study showed that gutta flow showed the highest levels of uh, filling in different levels of uh, the root canal in com with comparison to the other materials that were used in the study. Now, root canal filling is a very important property because we require that tight seal between the dentinal walls in the canal and our GP. The only interface between them is a sealer. So we require to have maximum contact between the root canal wall and the GP cone. So as I mentioned in the previous slide that we need to have minimum uh, gap between the dentinal surface and the sealer surface. So this study proved exactly the same due to the expanding property of gutta flow 2 that we have the interfacial marginal gap between the sealer and the dental surface was minimum among the very two commonly used materials in the market. In the next slide, a few photos are attached to uh, visually demonstrate how uh, beautifully this material seals the root canal and uh, lets us achieve that uh, seal, uh, hermetic seal as much as possible. In the previous study, we have seen how gutta flow 2 provides a very good marginal seal between the dentin and the gutta flow and the sealer. Now this study is a direct continuation of that study itself, of the results of that study. This study shows how gutta, gutta flow uh, gives a very good long term sealing ability in comparison to AH+. This graph in this slide shows you how it compares, how gutta flow compares with AH+, on 3 days, 30 days and 120 days. Uh, with different techniques that is single cone and collateral condensation. In the previous slide, we have seen how gutta flow compares with H plus with respect to coronal leakage. In the same study, uh, the apical leakage was also calculated and the data is shown in the form of a graph. So you can very easily see how gutta flow 2 has a very less or minimal apical leakage with the comparison to H plus. Again, with the same uh, techniques that is single cone 
and collateral condensation so the conclusion of the study as uh, was that gutta flow over time shows a greater apical and coronal sealing capacity than h plus it is a very important thing because if we have a long term sealing ability the prognosis of the tooth automatically improves in a previous study mentioned in the slide we have already seen how gutta percha has a very low cytotoxicity with comparison to other products now in this study it has been shown how silicon sealers as a category has a definite advantage over other products like epoxy and methacrylate so this is a very important study and the conclusion of it was that the silicon based sealers demonstrated cell viability close to 100% for all setting time this study was undertaken again to understand the sealing ability of gutta flow with comparison to other products this study was a bit different because in this case uh, mandible incisors were used to mimic oval canals because as we all know uh, canals come in different shapes and sizes not all patients are the same and we face enough difficulty in that uh, case so the sealing ability of gutta flow 2 in those cases were evaluated finally the result of the study was that the silicon based sealers that is gutta flow resulted in significantly fewer samples being contaminated now the meaning of contamination in this study was the sealing ability right uh, fewer fewer micro leakages were present when gutta flow was used hence the contamination was less so we have always known that a root canal treated teeth has a weaker tooth structure or at least it is weaker than an intact teeth so this study was made in which it was found that gutta flow 2 has a potential to strengthen the endodontally treated teeth to a level that is similar to that of an intact teeth now it is a very important thing or a property of gutta flow 2 that it is able to raise the strength of that teeth to a to such a level because having that strength that additional strength will improve the prognosis of the tooth and also immensely help our uh, treatment planning as such so with this point i would like to conclude my presentation i hope you all liked it and thank you so much for taking out time to listen uh, to this presentation thank you so much